Yeah. Um, so let me just quickly go through three. Uh, one is that uh, you know, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, the reality is that majority of us die after 65, right? 35 percent is only who die before we touch. Still, majority of us die after 65. We may die for various reasons, but we do get into this category of periods. So that is where uh, in India, unfortunately, you know, in Bangalore itself, we have uh, more incubation centers than uh, old age homes. You know that? Yeah. So, uh, and another big gap I see here is that see most of us look at this space in a social sense. We look at it as an NGO or not for profit way of looking at it. We look at it as a charity sense, which is uh, I think is a possible reason why. In fact, I've also spoken to some. Uh, I used to go to some uh, old age homes to regularly contribute whatever we could contribute and they always would cry. They would always cry. In fact, till few years ago, there was no tax exemption if you donate to uh, old age homes. So they were not even getting money from people because there were people who were willing to donate only if they are getting tax exemption. So uh, there were only a few people who were contributing and we were contributing not for any exemptions, we were contributing for our own wish. And that has been the reason that they were not even able to sustain and I have seen many of them even shut down. Old age homes were run because they had somebody old and so they had no caretaker so they write their property uh, home to somebody to run an old age home and that somebody runs it till a point and they have their family who takes over that, looks at a better opportunity with that building as a real estate and they monitor it. See this has happened consistently and keeps happening for some of years. So instead of looking at it as a not for profit or, uh, or a way to serve people. If you just look at it, to start with, it, let's just look at what kind of numbers are this. This was prepared in uh, Apple and transferred to Microsoft, so there we call the mix up. But we're talking about 1 billion people in the world who belong to this category. So the number is significant. It's not a small number that you have to think of, or you don't even have to worry about. It's actually a significant number. See, and this is the percentage which is growing and it's growing at a pretty fast rate. One more thing, uh, while I was doing some research to it, women outlive men here on an average of four and a half years. That was quite interesting. So, so, uh, <laughs> so uh, see, we have uh, greater than 65% of uh, people uh, this is what I was earlier talking about, that we have 65% of the people who outlive this. So we actually lie. Uh, so there are significant number of people who uh, live past 65. So you actually, and this number is only growing. And, uh, just look at this part of it. See, we actually have, there's a point, uh, let me try to get it. See, uh, on an average world population is 9% of the world population is 65 years. And just look at region wise. And what I put in the brackets here, right, East Asia and Pacific, uh, the total percentage is 11 who are 65 years. <coughs> One percent are ultra rich, are really wealthy people. See, 1% one of the population is it's huge. So there is a lot of money. And you actually probably already thinking which country it is, right? So then, Euro area is 21. Europe and Central Asia actually has 4% of people who are really wealthy. See, uh, uh, with heart you, you can do this, but you actually can target who's got the money to pay. Right? And once you make that money, you can always have a charity or have, uh, have, have a foundation which caters to those who can't afford, which is still a huge number. Right? And six, uh, see, six percentage is South Asia. Incidentally, India's six percent population is also in this category. See, we talk about six percent, it's significant. See, I am from Kuruk. I belong to a community called Kuruk, Kodawa, which is 0.2 percent. Right? And we're talking about six percent. Jains are, everybody knows Jains, right? Pretty much control India and some of the biggest banks globally are 2% of Indian population, 6% are here. So, there is significant population and look at 
where the income group is. You have 18% of the 65 plus, right? And this is only within the segment I'm talking about. I'm not talking about 18% of the global population. I'm talking about 18% of people above 65 belong to high income group. So this is significant. There's a lot of money, people have money to spend. So you don't really have to start looking at how do I cater to, how do I socialize. We will take questions after we run through this. So you actually can look at, target the segment you choose to. So you also have low, low, low income and low and middle income. See, it's very understandable. Low income is only 3% because majority of them don't make past 65. Unfortunately. But that's a separate part of the story. Who want to start this, you still have an opportunity. Only thing is the low income, low and middle income group will have to be dealt with the support of the government schemes and all those things because that is the way you can actually go for. But you can anyway switch it to CSR with a new finance minister bringing some, some people call it draconian, where they oversee if you don't invest CSR or not spent in three years, the government will take it away. So they are ensuring that CSR is spent. However ridiculous it may sound, but it sounds like an opportunity. So it can be targeted here. And then middle income, possibly majority of us belong here, is also a decent segment, 8%. So this is a segment, right, who can still pay 12 to 15,000. Right? Probably we are looking at upper middle income, income, which is again a bigger group of 10%. So there is serious money available here. You just look at it, 18% and 20%. You just want to get it to 100%. I didn't take it. I only took what is uh, relevant in the context. No, you have middle income. So high income, middle income, and the categorization. But it's not adding up on there. No income. No income. So. Yeah. You know, sometimes you have to tolerate some. <laughs> So upper middle income is also a significantly bigger opportunity. So the point I'm trying to make with these numbers is that this is seriously big. If you uh, actually look at uh, uh, you know uh, highest investment uh, that has happened, uh, I think last year was in ad tech space. You know from the funding point of view. So if you look at it. Uh, what kind of money ad tech is uh, spending? It's huge money, right? Anybody has a number? In this space? In ad tech. In this space? No, generally ad tech. So, uh, see, here the geometric is segregated to two categories, right? One is the medicine market, other one is the case studies. All that was talked about largely was in the care space, right? Medicine is a huge space. But uh, fortunately or unfortunately, that's completely handled by the huge corporation. <coughs> yeah, see, uh, look at the rate of growth here, right? It's really growing fast. But uh, and this is annually. In fact, uh, there are very few businesses which are growing at this fast rate. And the best part is, there are businesses which are growing fast and if you look at the long term uh, projections of it, they start tapering down. But this one keeps growing. So this is a serious opportunity space that uh, you should consider. Maybe whatever you may be doing, just think about it, how you can stitch what you are trying to do. And opportunity is pretty much in every space, every area that you can think of. And uh, you don't have to really uh, think of be a socialist. You know, maybe most of us, uh, you know, who probably cross fought the socialist by design because we were brought up like that. So, uh, and we are probably forcibly outgrowing it. But you still think of it, there's a huge opportunity here, a lot of money, and people are making it. Mm -hmm. And we are not doing it in India. If we don't do it, somebody else will come and they'll start making it. So, uh, you have devices, people try, people fail. But Arms didn't stop investing it. He stopped doing it himself. And you know some people invest with heart, right? So yeah. So you can yeah. Is this the correct year of activity, or are you talking about a five year down the line?
this is actually last year. I don't have the current numbers. There's no published data. And uh, one other thing is that uh, uh, there was one other report by United Nations which said that uh, I think it was published in 2017. If you have lived to, if you have crossed 60 in 2016, there are more likelihood, about 65 percent chances that you will outlive 80. How ridiculous! I mean, the number, whatever the growth rate is, just more. So, do you think of it? I mean, can you imagine how much it's going to be? And 65 percent of whoever wants to work in the space are sitting here as customers. <laughs> <laughs> also, I mean, how many places you have a venture pitching to, and 65 percent of the audience are your target audience? <laughs> no, seriously, think of it. You actually don't have. You rarely find a any small group where a good majority of that audience can be your target audience if you are in that space. Hardly any space. But this yeah, actually is. Why am I selling it? Because I see, you know, we actually had one other hackathon recently and there are very few people actually thinking about it. Even while trying to pitch for this, they are actually trying to cater to people like you and me. Ridiculous. They think who will pay for it. They are not just looking at the right numbers. There are enough people who will pay. You just make it to those who can pay. You have something for 20,000, go to him. You have something for 24,000, go to him. You have something for 50,000, go to him. Oh. <laughs> or you wait another 10 years, you can launch a Tinder app for seniors, and you will get a brand ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be a brand ambassador for that, I need to be. Only to extend further, if this continues, actually by the, the research is saying by 2040, 3540, there will not be any more aging also. And the aging will be your choice. That will be your choice. Well, uh, <laughs> how many of you have read the uh, Ray Kurzweil's Singularity? Singularity book by Ray Kurzweil. Have you heard of it? It's a big thick book. Uh, how many of you really read book, big books? Please, I recommend, highly recommend read it. If not, out of curiosity, go through it. I don't remember which page, but uh, there's one uh, reference to, uh, or maybe in, uh, what's that? Uh, Kindle, you probably can search and go to the keywords. Uh, uh, there is a uh, there is a interview of a person who is running a, uh, uh, he's a secretary of a, uh, uh, I'm forgetting it, a futurist group or something in London. This book was published in 2008. I was reading it in 2009, which is 10 years ago, and there he says, uh, he tells closely in that uh, the man living in his 60th year today will live to see his thousand year. See, there's a, a futurist group that he's part of, and it's very popular. In fact, uh, uh, people like uh, your Tesla guy, yeah. uh, Elon Musk is also part of that group. Sorry? No, 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 no. Uh, so uh, uh, I'll, I'll track with that name. So, so there are people working on it. So uh, I don't know whether this man who was in the 60th in 2008 will live to see 1000, but uh, pretty possible if you just see that number of people living century. See, irrespective, right, it's an opportunity. It's money, 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 and sitting with lots of money. So think of it. And uh, how many of you are thinking of a new business idea here? So probably you should spend time with this. This is a serious opportunity. All right. Thank you. I will start the question here.